the endocrine system. The endocrine system is for you grade 11. So we're talking about the system that is present in your body that makes chemical signals that help the body grow, develop, and maintain homeostasis. As you remember, when we talked about the nervous system, we said that the nervous system is more of a wire system all around your body. All parts of the nervous system, they are related to each other through wires, which are the nerves. The endocrine system, we said it's more of a satellite system. So one point gives out the signal and only those who got the receiver are going to feel the signal. So the endocrine system makes chemical signals that help the body grow, develop and maintain homeostasis. Some of these chemicals, they control uh, processes such as cell division, cell death and sexual development. The chemical signals that are made by the endocrine system are called the hormones. These hormones, they are formed in the endocrine, in the glands that are found in many different areas of the body. As a hormone moves through the body, it comes in contact with many different cells, but it will only interact with a cell that has specific membrane receptors. If the hormone touches a cell that doesn't have the specific receptor or the receiver as we explained it, only the ones with the adequate receiver are going to receive a certain signal, nothing happens. If it touches a cell that has the correct receptors, it is going to bind to the cells and it's going to push the cells to make certain proteins or enzymes or certain activities. The cells that have receptors for a certain hormones are called the target cells. All the hormones belong to one or of two categories. They are, they are either steroid hormones or non-steroid hormones. All steroid hormones, as the name shows, are made of cholesterol, which is a type of lipid or a type of fat. On the other hand, there are three types of non-steroid hormones that are made up of one or more amino acids. The steroids and non-steroid hormones, they influence the cell activities in different ways. The steroid hormone is going to enter its target cells by passing through the cell membrane. Once inside, the steroid hormone is going to attach to the receptor, which transports the protein into the nucleus. After it's inside, the steroid hormone binds to the cell's DNA. This binding causes the cells to produce the proteins that are coded by that portion of the DNA. So, steroid made of cholesterol and they are able to enter inside the cell's nucleus while the non-steroid hormones they do not enter their target cells the non-steroid hormones they bind to protein receptors on the cell membrane and then they cause chemical reactions to take place inside the cells when non-steroid hormones bind to receptors the receptors change chemically so steroid they enter into the, the cell's nucleus and they bind to the dna Non-steroid, they do not enter. They are going to wait and bind to protein receptors on the cell membrane. When non-steroid hormones bind to receptors, the receptors change chemically. This change activates molecules inside the cells. These molecules, they are called second messenger. So they are not going to enter the cell themselves, but they are going to stimulate certain molecules that, they are, that are called second messengers to do their job for them. So these second messengers are going to react with other molecules inside the cell. The products of these reactions is going to initiate other chemical reactions in the cell. So we have two types of hormones, whether they are steroid hormones that contain cholesterol or non-steroid hormones that are formed of amino acids. The steroid hormones, they, they fuse through the cell membrane, they bind to a receptor within the cell the hormone and the receptor enter the nucleus and then the steroid hormone is going to cause the DNA inside the nucleus to manufacture certain types of proteins. The non-steroid hormones, they bind to a receptor on the cell membrane. They wait at the door and then they are going to stimulate a second messenger within the cell. This second messenger is going to start a series of chemical reactions in the cytoplasm and this second messenger is going to activate certain enzymes. So these are the two types of hormones that you have. In the endocrine glands, the endocrine glands, unlike the nervous system, the endocrine system doesn't have its own connected network. As we said, the nervous system is more of a connected network, while the endocrine system, it's more of a satellite network. 
the chemical messages of the endocrine system can travel where they need to go. The hormones travels in the travel in the bloodstream to all areas of the bodies in order to find their, their specific target cells. The endocrine system has a set of glands. We're going to talk about each one of them and which type of hormones they release. So we will start with the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is a small area in the middle of the brain. It makes hormones that stimulates the pituitary gland to release hormones. So the hypothalamus present in the brain. And not only it stimulates, it's, uh, it produces hormones that stimulate the pituitary gland to produce hormones. I know it's a twist, but it's a fact of the endocrine system. So the hypothalamus produces two hormones. First of all, the growth hormone releasing hormone. The growth hormone releasing hormone, okay, which causes the pituitary gland to release growth hormone and the gonadotropin releasing hormone which causes the gonads which are the testes and the ovaries to, re to release hormones that control the reproductive system. So the hypothalamus is the manager of my manager, okay? So the hypothalamus secretes hormone that push the pituitary gland and that push the gonads to produce their own hormones. Then we have the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is also in the middle of the brain. It makes and releases hormone that controls cell growth. As for example, we have the growth hormone. We have the growth hormone. It stimulates cell division, protein synthesis, and bone growth in many tissues. So the first thing is the growth hormone. It also, control the it, it, it also produces the antidiuretic hormone. The antidiuretic hormone causes the blood to absorb water from the kidneys. So diuretic means that this specific hormone leads to the loss of water. Antidiuretic means that it keeps the water inside. So the pituitary gland releases the growth hormone which stimulates the cell division and of course the growth and it releases the antidiuretic hormone which causes the blood to absorb water from the kidneys. Then we have the thyroid. The thyroid is this gland present in the front of the neck. It's present around the trachea and in the front of the neck. The hormones that are released by the thyroid, they regulate metabolism, growth, and development. People which have problems with the thyroid hormone, either if it is secreting more hormones in this case, they lose weight despite the fact that they are eating very well because it's controlling their metabolism. People who have problems with delay of the uh, release of the hormones from the thyroid gland, they usually put up more weight despite the fact that they are not eating that much because still it is affecting their metabolism. So the thyroid gland, which is present in the front of your neck, it releases two th th three types of hormones. Thyroxine, T4, and triiodothyronine, which is T3. We call them T3 and T4. They increase the metabolism, digestion, and the energy levels. And then we have the calcitonin, which is another hormone. It removes the calcium from the blood and uh, pushes to bone formation. What does remove the calcium from the blood means? If I test you and I find that you have high levels of calcium in your blood, I have to be worried because you need to have an adequate amount of calcium in the blood, but the calcium has to go to your bones. So one of the functions of the thyroid is to push this calcium to deposit on your bones. Then we have the thymus gland. The thymus gland is present in your chest and it makes hormones that cause the white blood cells to mature and it also to, uh, stimulates the white blood cells to fight off infection. It is present in your chest between the two shoulders in to the front. Okay, so the, th the, th the thymus gland uh, produces thymosine which causes white blood cells to reproduce and mature. Then we have the adrenal glands. 
the adrenal means that they are close to the renals or the kidneys. The adrenal glands are present on the top of your kidneys. The adrenals, they secrete hormones that control the fight or flight response. Fight or flight, as we explained in psychology, this is the response you have whenever you, you are in a stressful situation. When you are in a stressful situation, you need to have the decision. Should I fight the situation or should I fly away? This is why we call it fly, fight or flight response. So the adrenal glands are present on the top of your kidneys and they are responsible for dealing with stress. The type of hormone that is, secreted by, that is secreted by the adrenal gland is called epinephrine. Epinephrine causes the heart to increase its strength, it increases the number of contractions, and it causes the blood to circulate more rapidly. The adrenal hormones also increase the breathing rates and the alertness. Because you are in a stressful situation, you need to be alert and you need to be breathing well. Your cells need all the oxygen in order to make the right decision. Then we have the pancreas. Okay, the pancreas is present within your, it's part of your digestive system. And the pancreas, it's, it's present between the stomach and the intestine. It makes digestive enzymes as well as hormones that regulate how much sugar or how much glucose the body stores and uses. The pancreas releases two main hormones. The insulin, which removes sugar from the bloodstream and increases the sugar metabolism or the breaking down of sugar. The glucagon, which increases the sugar production and adds sugar to the bloodstream. So, you're taking too much sugar today, the pancreas is going to release insulin in order to break down this sugar. If today you're fasting and you're not getting enough sugar, this is when the pancreas releases glucagon and this glucagon makes sure you, it, 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 uh, that you're going to have sugar production within your cells despite the fact that you're not having enough sugar intake. The testes. So the testes are parts of the gonads. We, or the gonads we call them. Uh, the, the, the testes are called the gonads, and the ovaries are also called the gonads. They both form steroid hormones. The male gonads or the testes they cause sexual. They pr they produce testosterone, which is a male sex hormone that causes sexual maturation. It includes the sperm production and the male characteristics such as the facial hair and the deep voice the the facial hair the deep voice and the production of sperm they are all related to the function of the testes which are the male gonads the ovaries the ovaries produce two very important hormones the estrogen and the progesterone the estrogen causes sexual maturation as the production of the eggs and it influences the female characteristics just like testosterone but in females while the progesterone is responsible for the menstruation in females. This is uh, the cover-up for your endocrine system. And of course, you need to remember that the main idea is that the hypothalamus is responsible, is, is interacting with both your nervous system and your endocrine system. Both of them, they connect to each other at the base of the brain where the hypothalamus acts as part of both systems. As part of the uh, central nervous system, it receives, sorts, and interprets information from sensory organs. As part of the endocrine system, the hypothalamus produces releasing hormones, releasing hormones because they are called releasing hormones because they stimulate other glands to, st to release their hormones. We said that, for example, the, the hypothalamus pushes the pituitary to secrete the growth hormone. Many of the hypothalamus releasing hormone affect the pituitary glands. These glands can quickly pass hormones back and forth to each other. A series of short blood vessels connect the two, the hypothalamus and the pituitary. These two glands work together to regulate various body processes. When the nervous system stimulates the hypothalamus, it releases hormones which travel to the pituitary. Together, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, they form many processes. Re they regulate many processes. So when the body, for example, becomes cold, the thermoreceptors in the nervous system are going to send a signal that stimulates the hypothalamus. So cold. So through the nervous system, we're going to stimulate the hypothalamus, which is part of the endocrine system. 
and then the hypothalamus is going to respond by releasing a hormone which is called the, th the TSH releasing hormone. The TSH releasing hormone is going to travel to the pituitary hormone. The pituitary is going to release the TSH which is the thyroid stimulating hormone. So hypothalamus is going to stimulate the pituitary. The pituitary is going to stimulate the thyroid. Okay. When the thyroid starts releasing the thyroxine hormone, which increases the cell activity, the cells are going to become more active and the body temperature is going to increase. In this case, the thermoreceptors inside the hypothalamus are going to stop releasing the thyroid releasing hormone, the thyroxine releasing hormone. So the hypothalamus, it acts as a connection in function between the central nervous system and the endocrine nervous system and these two together they maintain the homeostasis you have to know that hormonal imbalances can cause severe illnesses we always talk as your grown-ups whenever a person is suffering from a certain disease for example they're suffering from obesity they are suffering from problems in having children they are suffering from other growth problems whenever a person they uh, whenever a person is facing such problems one of the first things the doctors they pay attention to are their hormones that's it for your endocrine system grade 11 starting next week we're going to start the revision